Hello and welcome to part one of A Walk Down Lambeth Way, a series of videos celebrating Lambeth Heritage Festival. Throughout its 150 year history, the Brigade has had a special relationship with Lambeth through tragedy, conflict and celebration. As the Brigade is planning to make Lambeth the home of its museum once more, this video celebrates key events forming London's Fire Brigade in Lambeth. The story of the Brigade in Lambeth first begins in 1918 with the Albert Embankment fire. The fire occurred at J.H. Branton & Co, who were a cattle food manufacturer. The smoke created by the fire, mixed with the fog, created an environment so thick that the firefighters wore smoke helmets to tackle the blaze. The building had been built upon ground that was once marshland. It is thought that the damp from the ground seeped into the walls of the building, weakening the mortar holding the bricks together. There was no way the damaged wall could stand up to the intense heat of the fire. By the time the brigade received the call to attend, the fire had already been burning for some time. The roof had collapsed and blocked all entry into the building. The firefighters were able to control the fire by using a fire engine connected to two nearby water hydrants. Long escape ladders were the only way to reach the fire, high up on the third floor. The reduced visibility concealed a looming danger as the outer wall of the three-storey building bulged outwards, collapsing on top of the firefighters. The falling wall killed seven firefighters and injured several others. The incident remains one of the most significant losses of life for the brigade from a single fire. I heard sub-officer Cornford call out, look out, sir, and saw the building collapsing. I called out, drop everything and run but was knocked down by the falling debris and part of the escape ladder. The cause of the fire was never discovered. It was thought that rats had chewed into some electrical cable, causing sparks that then ignited the oil, linseed cake and spices stored in the warehouse. This created the thick smoke. We are gathered not so much in sorrow as in reverence to the example of duty done unflinchingly without any thought of self which these men have left behind. After the Albert Embankment fire, London Fire Brigade's responsibilities and numbers continued to grow. The old headquarters at Southwark was quickly being outgrown. In the 1930s, a new location was found at Lambeth, on the same site of the 1918 fire. The structure of the new headquarters building was created from a steel frame with brick cladding and the design looked like the bridge of a ship, reflecting the brigade's naval connections. It was designed by E.P. Wheeler, architect for London City Council. The cost of the building and equipping the station was approximately £389,000. The building had an appliance bay for seven fire engines, accommodation for officers and staff, and a 10-storey high training tower. It also had a fireboat station for emergencies on the River Thames. There was a rear balcony with seating for 800 people to watch weekly displays by the brigade. The displays became so popular that in the summer months they were, according to the Special Fire commemorative publication, a box office success. Members of the public had to apply to the chief officer in order to obtain a ticket. London Fire Brigade's band had its own stand bill, beneath which the museum was originally located. As early as the 1930s, artefacts were collected, all illustrating the history of the fire service in London. The front of the building was elaborately designed with sculptured reliefs by Stanley Nicholas Babb and Gilbert Bays, who was a key figure in the war memorial movement that started after the First World War. The coat of arms was produced by F.P. Morton. The sculptures depicted firefighters using what would have been the most modern pieces of uniform and equipment used by London Fire Brigade in the 1930s. Headquarters also had a memorial hall dedicated to the memory of the officers and men of the London Fire Brigade who throughout the years laid down their lives whilst doing their duty. Headquarters was opened with much ceremony by King George VI on Wednesday the 21st of July 1937. The King watched as 150 firefighters paraded for royal inspection, accompanied by the Chief Officer Major Morris. After London suffered some bombing raids during the First World War, 
the new London Fire Brigade headquarters was designed to withstand attack from the air. It was from here that the capital's firefighting operations were run during the Second World War. An underground control room was constructed to withstand a direct hit and a gas attack with its own reserve electric light installation and forced ventilation. Even as the bombs fell close by, Lambeth headquarters stood firm. In Lambeth alone, over 1,200 high explosive bombs were dropped during the blitz. London's fire service was almost overwhelmed by the sheer number of fires, with the German raids being timed to hit London when the River Thames was at its lowest point, hampering access to the vital water supply. Despite sometimes limited training and basic equipment, the firefighters of London, under the guidance of Lambeth headquarters, fought back and finally overcame the Blitz. When peace was declared on the 8th of May, 1945, London's fire service had attended over 50,000 emergency calls and 327 firefighters had sacrificed their lives to protect their city. The year 1966 marked the centenary of London Fire Brigade and the 300th anniversary of the Great Fire of London. And once again, the focus was on Lambeth headquarters. As part of the celebrations, the brigade organised a river pageant at Lambeth and a commemorative display, which was attended by Queen Elizabeth II and the Duke of Edinburgh. The exhibition at Lambeth headquarters was held on the 1st of November, 1966. The Queen visited the control room, as well as observing an hour long presentation in the yard. This included a procession of fire engines, along with historical reenactment of a Victorian firefighting sequence, using a steam fire engine to extinguish a blaze. The celebratory events helped to establish cohesion with the Brigade after the formation of the Greater London Council in 1965. As part of the commemorations, many predicted the future of London Fire Brigade for the next 100 years. This included suggestions of thermal imaging cameras, automatic fire detectors, personal radios, and the more ambitious idea of gas-pressured self-propelling platforms to aid rescues. In the 100 years of its existence, the Brigade has established, in peace and war, a reputation for skill, gallantry and a tradition of service to the public, which is second to none. 